Hello guys, welcome to another episode of the Commerce Lab by Comsi. My name is Vincenzo Toscano, founder and CEO of Comsi. Today we bring you another special guest. Her name is Andrea and she is the origination manager at Bupus, which is actually a company that provides flexible financing for e-commerce and SaaS businesses. So I think that's why today uh, the perfect topic will be basically around how we can use this uh, financing solution to basically fund your Amazon business and help you grow it to the next level, right? So yeah, before we jump into that, for sure, I want you to bring you to, to the presentation, Andrea, just to get to know more about you and welcome you to the show, yeah? Thank you, Vincenzo. Very happy to be here. and to be able to talk with you in this space. You already mentioned everything that's kind of relevant. I'm <laughs> an Indonesian manager at Bubos. Personally, I come from the startup environment. I used to run a startup myself. And just last beginning of this year, I came in contact with this company and I realized they were some, doing something very unique. Awesome. And that's basically what why I joined, what brings us here now. As yeah. you were mentioning, we do financing for e-commerce and SaaS businesses. What That's makes right. us so unique, however, is that we provide something that no other financing partner is providing right mm. now, which is revenue-based lending tailored for acquisitions. So we basically noticed that there was a lot of people out there, sellers, business owners that were looking to acquire businesses, either to diversify, grow a portfolio, maybe to buy out a competitor for whatever That's reason. Right. And they just didn't find a financing solution that was convenient for acquisition purposes. And that's how Bupos was born. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, actually, that's why I find it so interesting because we know that most of the financing solutions out there usually takes a big chunk of either your equity or other things like that, which we yeah. know it might not be as beneficial depending on the, on the state of your business. So very interesting to exploring how this can be beneficial, especially for, as you mentioned, Amazon sellers to keep expanding to the next level. Yeah, um, and in fact, we tend to just... Adding on that, you know, that you were mentioning before, it's not just the equity, like that can be a big problem for sellers that are looking to create some kind of aggregator, right? And That's they want right. to raise some money. Right now, we all know that it's not easy to raise the money. So if you have to give up some equity and delude yourself, that might make it even trickier to raise the valuation you might be aiming for. Yeah. So there's this big inconvenience of delusion that these people that are looking to acquire Amazon businesses, for instance, encounter and then there's also other people might say i'm fine just going to a bank right and That's i'll right. try to get the convention alone to just acquire a business but hey two problems here first one traditional banks are super skeptical when it comes to <laughs> yeah amazon, amazon. Yeah, I I'm, I'm sure everyone has experienced some issue like my amazon business i'm not sure we want to lend on they that. don't even think you have a real business if you say amazon is that a part-time exactly. thing or what <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. and when you finally convince them to give you the money there's so much bureaucracy it takes forever this is a very competitive market we work a lot with the us and all over europe but like a lot in the us just because there's a lot of movement there and sba loans for instance which are bank loans for small business for small businesses acquisitions they take a medium an average of three months that's like way too much. By the moment yeah. you get the money, you've lost the deal. And then they last for personal mm -hmm. guarantees. We all know that that's not ideal. Seems like COVID is the past now, but who knows yeah. what will happen tomorrow, right? So in the face of the options, delusion, personal guarantees, taking forever, not qualifying. We said, hey, there's a niche here. There's a market. And... I'll take it to yeah. you now. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I definitely love that. I actually was having a look at your website and just the fact that the personal guarantees, that's a big one because yeah. most uh, financing solutions out there, they, they ask you to put so many things in the line. I mean, your house and so much. many other things, which is too much and risky, right? Especially um, if you and, want to buy more than one Amazon business. Yeah, exactly. More yeah. than one Amazon business. How many times can you risk your house? Yeah, right. it's just like unbelievable. crazy, 100%. So mm -hmm. actually, that, that brings me to, to my next question, which is when um, usually what are some of the examples you could bring maybe that you have already experienced on, on, of yourself being in the company of some Amazon sellers using this financing solution? So have you seen some sellers using this maybe uh, for the first time when they enter into the Amazon space? Or have you seen some Amazon brands buying other brands in the same niche to expand their catalog? And you give some examples both, of, both, of both. So, your Yeah, just taking it one step back to give you an idea of like the size that we're 
achieving right now mm -hmm. and the multiple cases that we encounter so far this year we fund more than 40 deals oh. our loan book is over 30 million and we plan to close the end the the year or the end of the year together at a, having deployed 100 million so yeah. you can imagine the different cases scenarios and targets that we face right or that we help with yeah a lot now, yeah when when it comes to the amazon ecosystem let's focus it there both cases that you were mentioning work they're sellers that already have an amazon store mm -hmm. maybe they just exited and instead of building mm -hmm. another one from scratch they say hey what if i actually buy something that's already working i built on that i use a financing partner so i can minimize my investment and if i have 100k maybe i can just invest 50k bupo seller node will do the rest that's and then they grow it they flip it and they can make a profit of what 7x their initial mm. investment like it's huge yeah. that's very typical right so experienced sellers that exit a business and instead of starting from scratch they start to buy business build them exit them and then the return on investment is huge okay. other cases also sellers that they already own a business mm -hmm. they don't plan to exit it maybe not at least in the short term and they actually just want to diversify the revenue streams and perhaps grow through creating synergies mm -hmm. and they can either grow horizontally vertical within the amazon space we know the possibilities here are huge and then yeah. they'll come back to us and we'll help them find the right deal that's also something we can help with because we partner with like a lot of brokers in the space that's awesome and we'll have them finance the acquisition at the end of the day and then there's also a third case that's very common in the amazon ecosystem okay. that are all of those people that perhaps don't have that direct experience in amazon mm. so they have experienced managers maybe they had an e-commerce store in shopify or maybe they had a retail shop or maybe they invested in real estate so or maybe they have a lot of experience in marketing like you do right and they just never considered owning a business because they didn't even know they could own a business and then they find out that with our solution they can suddenly have the capital to acquire a business in a competitive way and run it and that's also where we help a lot of amazon sellers or soon to be sellers and yeah, then yeah. outside the acquisition we're just putting this in because it might be relevant for your community we are very much focused on acquisitions that's what like makes us very different however we can also help with working capital so it has yeah. happened in some kinds. There's just I was going Amazon. to ask you that. Yeah. Yeah. Then sometimes it's just an Amazon seller that comes around and says, hey, I need 100K to invest in marketing and inventory. That's more like typical. We see this a lot in the market. They can also come to us and we can also offer them solutions for that. That's very nice. Yeah. So basically you offer all the options, which is awesome. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Great. So I think now the other important question because i'm pretty sure a lot of people watching this right now say this sounds very interesting like yeah. the risk is very low the sound that really they can help me find the x amount that i need for my business now the question is what is the criteria because i know for sure you guys yeah. must have some kind of at least minimum criteria to really a person uh, be considered into this program so can you briefly touch yeah. on them so people can can know them yeah yeah glad you asked that one actually Let's focus the answer on like what's a core product and what mm -hmm. really makes us different, which is the acquisition side. Sure. When it comes to acquisitions, we do something called revenue-based lending. Okay, and before answering that question, I want to make sure that this concept is very clear because a lot of Amazon sellers have probably heard about it before and many others will have no idea what revenue-based lending means. Yeah. Long story short, to keep it very simple, the headline is basically we will lend X amount of money Mm -hmm. And the way to pay us back is through a percentage of revenues from the business that they're either growing or acquiring with us. I see. And here a lot of people say, hey, this is like Clearco, right? Or Wi-Fi or, or Pipe, a lot, of num a lot of names out there. Again, what makes us different is the fact that we do our acquisitions mainly. That's so right. That's already very different. Mm -hmm. And because of this, we're also the only ones that can go up to long term. So yeah. all of the other revenue-based lenders, which are very much focused on working capital, they'll extend their loans for six months. Maybe they'll stretch it to eight months. Maybe they yeah. lucky one year. Mm -hmm. We go up to five years. Awesome. This is important because this defines or kind of helps explain the criteria we have when lending for a business. 
because as you were saying before, we take most of the risk in these operations and yeah. we go long term. So whenever we're focusing on approving a target, we want to make sure that we think it's a solid and sustainable business for at least the next five years. Okay. Heads up that we can go up to 70, 80% of the purchase price. Doesn't mean that we always go there, but it does mean that we are taking a big risk here. Okay. Now, this being said, what 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 is our criteria or, criteria or what are we looking for? We can finance businesses all over the world. That's probably the first thing that people here listening are thinking. Hey, what wow. happens with the US? Yeah, I was going to ask that as well, the countries and all that. Yeah. You can be wherever <laughs> you want. Digital nomads, feel free. Yeah. You can be wherever <laughs> you want. The only kind of requirement we have, which is pretty straightforward and it's very easy, is that they establish, so the buyer establishes an LLC, okay. either in the US, mm -hmm. Canada, UK, or Ireland. And this is very nice. easy. We can connect them with some resources we have if necessary. But that is like the first part geographically, the LLC should be established there from the buyer, not the business being acquired, but the the company or the entity that will acquire the assets so that we can then transfer the funds there. Awesome. Now, that being said, since we're saying before, we do revenue-based lending. So we will be collecting payments from the revenues. Mm -hmm. We don't work with interest rates or anything like that. We work with something that we call royalty, which is the percentage okay. of revenues that we collect every month. It's a unique payment until we pay back the loan. I we see. want to make sure that the business that we're financing with the acquisition of the business that we're financing can sustain these payments without drowning mm -hmm. the business. So they yeah. have to be profitable business businesses and they have to have at least trailing 12 months revenue of 100K. Okay. Okay, so that's two important things to keep in mind, profitable and at least 100K in annual revenues lately. And then maximum, we can land up to two or three million. So then really it's, up to the buyer, right? I see. If your guys are targeting, we will only require them to be able to put at least 25% commitment of our lending amount. So basically, since we only take 20% of guarantees, we want to make sure that if something goes wrong, the buyer won't disappear and go to Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> right? Yeah, and for sure. So it's just that they invest $1 for every $4 we invest in. I okay, see. so this is already one criteria, like some commitment on some equity from the buyer, they can bring in investors, that's completely fine. So there's equity from the buyer, at least 25% of our lending amount, 100K in last tra tra trailing 12 months revenue. Yeah. Uh, profitability. We look at least for 24 months, ideally, of history. Okay. okay. We can do anything with more than 18 months, anything below 18 months of history. That would be outside of a lending scope and yeah. ideally 24 months. Okay. That makes and, sense. Yeah. And then so, go ahead. Go so ahead. Sorry, yeah. Sorry for interrupting. One thing. No, um, I can talk yeah. forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's very interesting. I, I think I like a lot the fact that it's based on the revenue. And my question is um, it just uh, for audience to understand more in depth, you were mentioning it's a percentage, like a royalty, basically, yeah. from, the per, uh, from the revenue. But if I'm not mistaken, the thing is that this royalty is going to be basically adapted depending on your business performance. So what I'm trying to explain here is that maybe you're not going to have the same fixed royalty for all your businesses, but you're actually going to tailor that based on, on how very the business true. is a performer, right? Yeah, very true. So we always look at every business or every deal on a case-by-case -case basis. I see. Yeah. yeah, we have an underwriting team that is analyzing hundreds of deals on a weekly basis. Okay. We actually have a listing site on our website, uh, bupos.com. If you go to acquire a business audience, yeah. you'll yeah. find there deals that already have people financing for them. And you'll be able to see that, as you were mentioning, every business will have its corresponding royalty. This is due to the fact that, as we were saying before, we want to make sure that we're not drowning any business. We want to make sure that the business is able to sustain our financing and still grow. So of course, the, the amount that we can lend and the royalty that we establish for that amount will depend on every business. The margins the business has, the multiplier of the acquisition, for example, that will always vary 
both or influence both our loan to value ratio so the amount that we can finance which we will always try to maximize but then again it will depend on how much the deal can take yeah. and yeah. it will also influence the royalty okay and i'm also very glad you brought this because a lot of people are worried that this will be very cash constraining yes i was going to ask that as well yeah <laughs> yeah can yes you can you briefly touch on because i know for sure it's an amazing option because in the long term if you do the business plan correctly you're not diluting your company shares and you basically keep the ownership and then you pay back your debt but we know the reality in that in the amazon space thing can go sideline right maybe yeah. your listings get suspended your progress don't get approved competition yeah. and then and then imagine you can pay the royalty back so Usually, what is the, the a scenario that can benefit both parties to, to find a solution in those scenarios to avoid that cash intensive consumption on, on the revenue? Yeah. I love what you were mentioning. It's like things happen. Yes, things happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you always sure. have an option there, right? Yeah. So, there's one pretty straightforward solution here. When we approve um, an, an acquisition or a deal, we will always try to give as much as possible mm -hmm. for every situation. Sometimes that will allow us to go up to that 70, 80% of the purchase price of an Amazon business. Sometimes if the business has tighter margins or the multiplier, for example, if the acquisition is very high, we might fall short of that 70, 80% of the purchase price, right? Yeah. But we will always try to give as much as possible to be the most useful. Yeah. And the royalty we establish is adjusted correspondingly to that maximum amount. Okay. Heads up that the maximum we'll ever take from the profit is 90%. And now you must be thinking, that's a lot. Like 10% mm -hmm. margin to go to the business, it's not much. Very true. However, that might be enough for people that are just looking to, as you were saying before, create a portfolio, invest in a business, minimize the risk. In the long term, yeah the long term they pay off or they pay off earlier we have prepayment incentives etc or some people might say actually i want to have more profit margins right and i want to have more cash flow well the good news here is that we're maximizing the amount we can lend and that's a royalty that they see on the term sheets however they don't need to take as much they're not obliged to take the full amount so imagine we so that you're not looking to acquire a company okay yes. and you're looking at a company let's keep it super simple i'm not very good at math <laughs> but let's say you're looking at a company that's 100k and yeah. we got lucky here and everything looks perfect and we say hey Vicenza, we can finance 70 percent and awesome. we establish a royalty that's quite high but the business can take it rest reassured that we establish that royalty that's because the business can take it yeah. and we give you 70k you just have to put 30k and you have you've bought this amazon business right now maybe you say hey i want to lower the royalty well, you have two options here. You can either invest more on your end. So let's say you invest 50, we invest 50. I we're see. getting you 20% less than our original amount. The royalty will also decrease 20%. So that okay. if you take less, the royalty lowers proportionally. So you have more cash. Yeah. At the end of the day, especially if that's you actually it. that's actually very interesting because I think I think maybe you have seen that those cases happening a lot that they get the funding and somehow the business skyrocket more than they thought it was going to grow and they can and pay you in the next year in the next year they can pay you all the remaining amount and they don't need you anymore and that's so. amazing because we don't have any yeah. prepayment penalties they'll just yeah. pay what's left for the loan and they can forget about it right yes, or awesome. come back to us to acquire another business because now they have more cash yeah and in this sense it is also very useful for the amazon sellers to know that we're very compatible with seller financing so let's go back to the same scenario. You're looking at this business. It's 100K. We can give you 70K yeah. and you can put 30K, but you only have 30K. Mm -hmm. And you can't, you want to lower royalty. You want to take less from us, but you don't have the resources right now in your bank account. Yeah. That's completely fine. We all know that seller financing and seller notes are very common in our space. So perhaps you come and you say, hey, what if I use a seller note? For 20k, I put 30k, and you guys just finance 50k. That's also completely okay, and that will also allow you to take less from your loan and lower the royalty proportionally. So again, it's not fixed. We will always give you the maximum so that you can use it all if you need it, and then it's all it's a game of numbers. So it's playing around different structures until 
the buyer and the seller find a solution they feel comfortable with. Yeah, yeah, I love the fact that for every single question I had in mind, you, you were already giving me the, the solution because I, <laughs> I had so many scenarios in mind that you basically gave me the solution, right? Which is great because I know in the financing space, some people is just very strict with the structure of the of how you provide the funding, but the 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 the, the reason behind why it made me feel so uncomfortable is because you're already giving you the option that you can you can basically change it midway. It's not fixing forever, which I think Amazon sellers a eh, will thank you a lot, especially with all the complexity and the things that happen in the Amazon space, as I just mentioned, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And let me just clarify something because I, I talk a lot. Sorry about that. <laughs> Don't worry. I, I love it. I mean, I love it 100%. <laughs> so um, what is important to know is that once we agreed to a term sheet, okay, and we played around the structure, whatever, and we got to a lending amount and the corresponding royalty that works for everyone, that will be fixed with the maturity of the loan. So if mm -hmm. we say that we're lending, imagine, let's say we're talking to get a little bit more juicy. Let's say we're talking a deal that's 1 million and we're financing 700K and we establish a royalty of 20%, it will always be 20% of the revenues. So mm. it will be fixed when it's agreed to, but it's a percentage. So it's not an, a fixed amount, right? So in this sense, yeah. So in this sense, for example, as you were saying before, Amazon sellers, things happen. So if suddenly you skyrocket the growth of the company, that percentage will represent more. So it's not that you pay more, it's that you can pay back faster. That's right. And if another month or another year sales are not as good, you're not fixed to having to meet a minimum monetary wise, it's still a percentage. So you will just be paying less. And this is convenient to know because let me just mention something fast, which is also something that people ask us a lot. Yeah. It's like, hey, how much does this cost? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, was, I had that question in mind as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because everything looks perfect, but guys, I want to be honest with everyone. It is more expensive than a back loan. Yeah. Which makes sense because yeah. it's a different game. Like and taking in consideration that you have so little risk compared to other type of bank loans. Exactly, I mean, exactly. It's a different game. Like we take most of the risk. Um, we ask for no personal guarantees. It's non-dilutive. So it's a different game. Yeah. Now what we do, what, what we have done is we've designed a structure a payback scheme that will allow maximum flexibility so that it is useful for the needs of every buyers because again things happen so there's some buyers or some amazon sellers that when they buy a business they want to leverage their capital so they want to take the loan to the end of the year five yeah and yeah. if they grow the business they want to use the remaining cash instead of paying us back maybe they want to reinvest in another business they own or they have other debt that they want to pay off, or they want to acquire another business and play with the momentum to grow their portfolio, right? That's right. That's one option. That's completely fine. Other sellers will say, actually, I grew the business. I have extra cash, or I brought in an investor, or I got access to a bank loan, and I want to restructure the debt for something cheaper, and they want to pay off the debt sooner. That's also completely fine. The that's answer right. to how much does Bufos cost is it depends on when you decide to pay back the loan. Yeah, the faster, the cheapest, the longest, yeah, the more pay, the expensive. It makes sense, hundred percent. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's basically the first year. It's one point fifteen times the amount they borrowed. Okay. Okay, so not times uh, the valuation of the company, not times what they've been generating that year, but times the amount they borrowed from us. One point fifteen times our facility. The okay. second year, it's 1.30 times the amount they borrowed. Third year, it's 1.45x. Fourth year on was it's 1.6x, which yeah. in a second, that's not a 60% interest rate. Again, this is a different game. Why? Because by the time they get to the second, third, fourth year, all of the payments that they've been doing every month with a percentage of revenues, the royalty again, the magic word here, have been amortized. So that yeah. is always deducted from the remaining balance. So at the end, they can expect APR to be very transparent here, to be between 15% and 20, 25%, depending on when they're paying off the debt, which year and what point of the year, how it's going for them, et cetera. 
Do you think that makes sense? Because yeah, it, it makes it makes certain it make no it okay. makes certain <laughs> sense. I, I know some people yeah. it might find a bit uh, tricky to get it the first time because they need to do the calculations on their head. Yeah. But I hundred percent follow you. I mean, it, it, as long as you have a, a solid business plan, it makes total sense. I think the issue may rise when you don't know what you're doing and you're just borrowing without knowing what you're doing. And that that can become a <laughs> yeah yeah it's always an issue <laughs> yeah i mean it, it's always going to be an issue but again as long as it makes sense the business has opportunity which is also part of the criteria that you have in your hands so you're not gonna yeah. take a business that doesn't have any future because at the end of the day you can also yeah. risk all the capital i think it's for sure a safe bet for both parties as uh, as long as both do their job right so yeah, yeah. it's, it's a no-brainer that's what we're trying to end Anyone watching this, I encourage you guys to reach out to me on LinkedIn or through Vincenzo, and we're always happy to jump on calls, help you guys understand how the process works, how the acquisition works, how you can structure a deal, lower the royalty, everything that we've been talking about, That's and amazing. do the numbers at the end of the day. Yeah, actually, just a one final question on the process, because I know some people may ask, this everything sounds amazing, I want to do it, but maybe they want to understand if this is going to take one year. To get the funding no, it's gonna no. take one week so that's it i i know that's not the case but just to give a final conclusion how this how usually long take this process to get the funding if they want okay to let me bounce this question back to you how much would you expect it to take if you had no uh, idea talk to me before so yeah. you know the answer just imagine yeah. this is the first time we're talking how yeah. long would you expect it to last a uh, Usually the process of getting the funding, I will say at least within one month. Yeah, for us, it's seven days. Yeah, so there you go, four times fast. <laughs> I mean, we were talking about this before. it's a competitive market, it's fast. So we can pre-approve any deal that comes to us in any business, even if it either acquisition or growth, in just 48 hours. We only request a 24 month profit and loss statement, I insist, Ideally, 24 months. We can yeah, do for sure. 18 and 24 months, but expect it to not be as good or to not be as aggressive if it has less than 24 months. So, 24 month PL statement. Okay. And the link to the Amazon store. That's all we need. Great. Yeah, easy. Easy peasy. Easy. Easy. <laughs> go to our website. They'll find a form there that says, and a call to action that says, get funded. The application might ask for other stuff. They can ignore that. We just mm -hmm. need 24 month PL, the link to the storefront. If it's an Amazon seller looking for growth, we will also require a balance sheet, but that's okay. it. That's okay. it. And then 48 hours, we provide them with feedback. And then once they signed the LOI or the term sheet and they're ready to move forward, our closing process lasts just seven days maximum. Can even be completed right. before that. It depends on the yeah. buyer themselves, right? very nice yeah so yeah thank you very much for that information i'm pretty sure people is gonna find it very helpful okay. i'm gonna make sure to include all your links uh, okay. linkedin everything on the description so people can reach out but yeah thank you and i'm pretty sure a lot of people is gonna find it helpful and they're gonna reach out 100 <laughs> so. thank you for it's having a pleasure me. very nice so we keep in touch okay bye bye, Take care. bye, -bye.